And that's the whole board. <laughs> Man, if I keep opening up like this, I will never lose with this deck. Oh my gosh. Hey, Eugene, coming. This is insane. Hey, so what you need? Break my board. Let's see, six negates in hand, or a Boros, two heralds. Well, that's easy. You use raw spear without spear mode. Okay, so no spear mode. You took a card out of my hand with a Boros, so uh, that's easy. Two kaijus. Oh, but you can only control one kaiju. That's good. Right? Dum, 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 dum. All right, you guys, I can't wait to show you this deck profile. It is literally a work of art. It is a it is a deck of perfection, if you will. It's actually kind of a monstrosity because um, Sam, uh, Sam, uh, you guys know Sam, a uh, fluffle Sam. You see him on the channel all the time. Really good friend of mine. He's the one who actually introduced me to this deck, and he got me contributing to the deck as well. So he's like my second set of eyes on the deck because you know between the two of you know between the two of us working on this, we have created just this perfect monstrosity. Pun intended. Um, it is a monstrosity of perfection. I don't know. I don't know how else to put this like in it, 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 it's like the more you play the deck and stuff And the more you realize like how much the engines kind of work together and everything um, I'm gonna try to explain everything the best I can throughout the video and explain like little subtleties of the deck You know how everything like really just meshes together so well um, I'm gonna try to explain that you know thoroughly throughout the video as I explain my car choices and everything like that But um, guys, I think that really as you see the deck, it's gonna kind of explain itself I mean, it's it's just it, it's amazing I can't wait to show it to you guys, so let's just get right into it. Starting off with the monsters, of course, this is a Herald of Perfection deck, so you have three Herald of Perfection. And uh, I know that my Heralds don't match, but this one's my lucky one. Every time I open with this one, every time I go first, like win the die roll and make this Herald first, I win. So like that's why I play this one, if you guys were wondering. But um, yeah, it's just like my good luck Herald or whatever. But um, yeah, so three Herald. Um, so this is what's really interesting, and this is what we've stuck with throughout this entire time. Two Benton, guys. Um, I've tested one we've tested one um one is actually you could technically play one uh, the reason why is because no one's you know who's playing like you know infernoids right now to snipe it out of, the, out of your graveyard you know who's playing dd crow for example to get it out of your graveyard you know etc like no one's really playing that kind of stuff and since no one's really playing that stuff you can technically play one but you don't want to do that two is the perfect number because you like to see it a lot but you don't want to see it too much like three literally clogs because it doesn't really do anything for you a lot of the times i'll search the second benton just to get it out of my deck for uh, fodder like like, you know, negate fodder for Herald because you don't want to draw into it. You would much rather draw into a stick, for example. So uh, that is what, that is why uh, we run uh, two Benton. But another reason why you only need two Benton is because you could search it so easily in the deck. I mean, you just get all of your pieces so easily now. It's ridiculous, especially with the spicy tech that I first added when I was introduced to the deck. Um, you know, Sam showed me the deck, you know, because he had like the fluff winch and sticks, chairs and stuff. He had never heard of Gale Dogger. And I was like, dude, you should play a uh, Gale Dogger in the deck. And he was like, what, what is that? And I was like, dude, check this out. And we, uh, and, uh, you know, this was before Lynx, by the way. So, like, uh, Gale Dagra actually, like, you know, was too much for the deck. We played it, like, one or two or something like that uh, before. But, like, now with the, now that we have an extra monster zone, you know, the extra deck monster zone and stuff, Gale Dagra is broken. <laughs> so broken. And not only can you send, like, the reason why it's broken is because, um, you know, you can send a Herald of Arc Light and get a search. And it's not once per turn you pay 6,000 life points to get a plus one. So you can search your, let's, let's just say you draw just your Herald. Herald. Well, you can search Ben 10 and your uh, Dawn off of just Dogra. It gives you two searches to complete your complete your hands for Herald. It's just so good. Not to mention, it is a level two. Uh, two plus, um, you know, a four off a of sticker chair is six for Herald. You know, stuff like that. Uh, most importantly, though, it is it is a search. Uh, plus, um, there's another card that we play in the extra deck now because of this thing that I can't wait to show you guys in the extra deck. You guys are going to be like, whoa, you, you, whoa, you play that now? Yeah, yeah, we play that now. But uh, let's, let's get to that in the extra deck, though. Let's get you guys hyped for now so this card does like just a lot for you in the deck and j on top of everything that i've already named off this is also an earth for mrs radiance with seraphonite you just go into radiant with seraphonite it is fantastic and you do run brilliant in this deck you have to brilliant fusion guys breaks this deck wide open it is just ridiculous another thing that breaks this deck wide open besides dogra and the brilliant fusion and just herald itself is uh, the sticks and chairs because this engine guys what's, re what's really really broken is you can search these off 
the BIM 10. Like you summon a herald, so you get a herald out, but not only do you get a herald out, but let's just say you have a stick in your uh, in your hand and you haven't like, you know, used your um, used your normal summon yet. Uh, you can search a chair and then a stick chair combo and just go off. And it's just, and you draw and it's just ridiculous, guys. This this engine is, it, it, it really, really helps the deck. It's, it's so good, so good. Plus, you know, uh, rank four plays and stuff. And the rank fours that you make off of this, like we really help uh, fix your hands and, and extend your boards. The, the whole deck works together perfectly. Um, I'm going to be doing combos, you know, at the end of the video and stuff. So stay tuned for that. If you guys don't see what I, what's going on here, um, I will be doing combos in this video to explain everything more thoroughly. But to finish up the monster lineup, uh, you play a two bear and a wings uh, because uh, this is the perfect fluffle lineup for the deck and it gives you an extra draw engine. Like, and plus these are all fairies that you could pitch off of Harold. And uh, Harold doesn't need a light fairy. Uh, ben 10 only searches a light fairy, but Harold only requires you to have a, uh, a fairy in hand. So you could pitch a, a bear off of, off of uh, Harold if you draw it, it's just fine. Uh, and actually at the end of the, and another thing about the Fluffle engine well, worth mentioning is that um, uh, at the end of the Fluffle combo, you will have a bear in your hand. So if you have a uh, Seraphonite out, it, it also gets you your Earth for Mrs. Radiant if you don't draw the Dogra. So between uh, Dogra and, and the, the Fluffle combo, you always have an Earth, you know, every single time you draw, um, you know, uh, every time you draw Brilliant Fusion, it's just, it's so good. Like this, this deck just really completes itself. And um, speaking of Brilliant Fusion, just the Garnet for the Brilliant Fusion target, and that is it for the monster lineup. And for the spells, of course, you have the three copies of Dawn of the Herald, so you can, you know, summon out your Herald and get that Ben 10 back to your hand. It is so good. You make this a chain link too, uh, banishing it, getting that Herald back to your hand, and then Herald will search out any light fairy that you want. It is really broken. And then uh, pre-prep of rights, guys. Pre-prep of rights, because this gets this and Herald to your hand. It's a really, really good card. Instant plus one. And uh, this is what really sucks. Before this deck profile, guys, I was just the, when the when the list dropped, I was like, you know what? I should probably order a third prep of rights. And I thought about it. I'm like, oh, well, surely out of all the secrets of eternity, uh, not secrets of eternity, secret forces, sorry, secret forces that I bought back in the day, surely I have a third prep. I was very, very wrong. I do not have a third regular prep of rights, so I have to get one. But uh, yeah, three prep of rights now that that's back because you pitch uh, Dawn off of Brilliant or or off of Toy Bender or off of the Field Spell, you know. Long story short, you pitch this and then you use uh, prep of rights to get it back and get you a search for a ritual monster. It's just, it's that simple. Like this, it works so well with the deck. It's really, really good. Uh, speaking of Brilliant Fusion, three Brilliant Fusion, self-explanatory, two normal summons, uh, puts uh, wings in your grave, and then if you have like a bear, you know, pitch bear, and then then you have like the fluffle combo right there um you know that's just one example of how the the, the it helps the deck you know then you have uh you know like i was saying earlier you go into mrs radiant with it because seraphonite's an earth and you have the you know uh gale dogger for example is an earth and go into mrs radiant and then stick chair combo you know just extend that way um it's it's, it's really, really good a uh, brilliant fusion just it really busts the deck wide open and um so uh moving on here we have a uh, three terraforming and two ritual sanctuary before uh we were we were testing out um you, uh, sam uh, turned me on uh, switching the ratios around before we were doing a three and two but uh he was uh he was like just uh, swapping around and then when i was testing it um there was times where i opened up i kept opening up to two terraforming and i really liked it so i just i kept it <laughs> so uh three terraforming and then uh two ritual sanctuary plus you know you play a desires in this now anyways so like if you banish like it, you just don't care um and then um we two toy vendor um uh, because uh after the um you know bear uh, wings combo after just uh, every time you resolve the combo in the deck it get um it gets both vendors out perfectly like both vendors are out of your deck perfectly every time um you know your bear is out perfectly every time it's just uh you know if you get the combo off it's just it's uh out of your deck like it's just it, it resolves itself completely and wholly uh the reason why we we're playing three before is just because we liked to open it up uh we uh, we liked to open up vendor with the ritual sanctuary uh because um if they ashed the ritual sanctuary it was still okay because you still got to search you know uh when you pitched uh, the vendor for cost but now uh the uh, prep is at three it's okay Okay, it kind of alleviates that because uh, you could pitch just the dawn now and then if you have a prep in hand you know you can you can just get the dawn back so it's not that big of a deal that's just what we swapped and it's uh, we, the, the ratio actually works out better it's like it's really like i think that this ratio i think that the, all the ratios in this deck now guys are really truly i honestly do feel like they are perfect um especially desires because i wasn't a fan of desires in this deck for a while guys um but the more I tested it, and the more the more I liked it, it was just, it fixes your bad hand.
hands so well. It baits out ash. It, I mean, it fixes your hands when uh, when you don't think that they have ash or whatever, and you go like pre prep, for example, when they do have ash and stuff. Like then activate this after it fixes that. But you normally kind of like it just like it just depends on when you activate this. You kind of like as a rule of thumb, just think of it this way: desires is something that you always want to try to activate last if you have like a good hand. But if you have like um, it, it, well, even if you have a bad hand, you want to get all your searches and stuff out anyways before you know you want to try to fix your hand as much as possible before you desire so um, there's that too and uh, plus desires uh, you uh, I use it honestly sometimes I'll activate it just to get rid of crap that I know is gonna be dead in my deck like <laughs> if I draw like a garnet for example I want a desires to get rid of the brilliant fusions or you know what I mean you can use it that way um, there's times where like I banished uh, there was one time in particular that I banished the whole fluffle engine and I was happy about it because <laughs> it was just so dead at the time um, I can't remember why though but I just remember banishing all of them just being happy about it uh, so yeah pot of desires just really really great and then for the last card in the, in the deck I'm um, start goblin because uh, after testing it this entire time we cannot cut it it's just it's just too good upstart is way too good not to mention having that extra spell in the grave like for free that gives you a draw uh, for ritual sanctuary plus you know getting just a uh, more spells in your grave the more spells you get in your grave is possible for ritual sanctuary to be able to you know uh, to summon back the stick for example to get a search for another chair to have another negate for herald that is also really really good everything in this deck just works so well together so ridiculously well together between the fluffle engine the brilliant engine stick chair engine i mean the rich uh, the, the field spell engine everything Thing about this deck just works out so well together you know the herald engine itself with ben 10 and stuff it's just everything links together stick chair engine oh my gosh it's so so good uh but that is everything for the main deck guys let's move on to the extra deck and i can't wait to show you the spicy stuff we have in there all right so for the extra deck let's start off with the stuff you make off of stick and chair starting with the uh, evil swarm ouroboros because you want to open this in your first turn and rob a card out of your opponent's hand making it even harder for them to get over your two herald ouroboros mrs radiant and stick board when when you have five or six negates in hand yeah you end with that every time <laughs> it's really broken uh, so yeah the uh, ouroboros fantastic card illuminite oh my gosh this card might is probably my favorite card in the extra deck because this card says um once per turn you can detach one xyz material from this card send one card from your hand to the graveyard and draw one card in other words this card gets you there it, it fixes your hand let's just say like I, I i don't even need to say let's just say i can tell you right now there's been several times where i've just needed that one dawn or that one herald or that ben 10 or whatever i need to finally get that herald on board after trying to dig for all the pieces and this got me there like you know you stick you stick chair into this and then it's just oh my gosh it's so good not to mention stick itself gives you a pop and another draw so between stick itself you know giving you a pop and a draw oh yeah plus you're going to use stick to pop your own toy vendor by the way and then now give you a search on top of your draw which is really really good which also goes to help fix your hands uh the, i forgot to mention that with stick chair earlier which is really really good um you know another part another part of the engine that's just really really broken uh but um yeah just a little and I just really really get you there um, and then uh, Delteros guys um, so uh, you go um, you go into Delteros going second usually because um, uh, actually all the time I've never made this going first <laughs> so like uh, you make this going second okay because um, you know uh, like I was just saying, saying a second ago with stick uh, you get to pop your opponent's card uh, draw off of that then use Delteros pop another card really really good uh, when you're trying to play through boards you know going second with this deck uh, then you play uh, this guy because um, with the, your stick chairs uh, with the chair specifically you can't uh, you you have to overlay with it you know using um you know three monsters uh so you have to uh, go into this but that's cool because that, that lets you go into lightning <laughs> like, it's really good that's why you play it uh, so you can slap lightning on top of it and then um you know, there are instances where you make a regular rank four like you have to you'll have like two sticks on board and stuff like that um you know weird situations come up so um you play a utopia and then um it actually kind of happens like like another thing that, uh, that's observable with this extra deck and that sam pointed out he's like everything uh, besides like your main combo card that you that you make in your turn one board every time that you want to make in your turn one board every time every other card in the extra deck you might resolve once in a tournament but like you're super happy to have every single one of those other cards and when he said that to me i was like yeah that's absolutely how the deck plays and like i'm uh, like it's just it's actually really great to be on the same page with the guy when it comes to this deck like there's nothing like there's nothing like cooler in Yu-Gi-Oh than being on like the same page with somebody and like really just trying to like you know work on a deck and make it 
perfect, you know? <laughs> but um, Utopia, you just play like regular Utopia. And then for the other rank four, I just play Castel uh, because um, it's the best rank four to make. It's just, it, it, it out stuff. And then um, I actually, um, I'm just gonna spoil it right now. I side Monster Reborn, I'm gonna explain it more later. And the reason why we side Monster Reborn is because you use, you know, you use Monster Reborn to get a level four from their graveyard. Then you summon like a stick, for example, and then go into Castel and uh, be able to out something. So that's just, uh, you know, one one instance. Uh, just uh, Castel is just there to, you know, out stuff. It's, it's like debatably the best rank four of all time. It's really, really good. Uh, then um, number 39, uh, Utopia Beyond. Um, I need to correct something that I stated in a previous deck profile. I sincerely, I sincerely, sincerely thought that you could overlay this guy on top of Utopia Beyond because it says you can lay it on top of a, uh, uh, a number 39 Utopia. I thought it said number, I think I thought it said, that it said number 39 Utopia Monster. And since it doesn't say a number 39 Utopia Monster and instead says a number 39 Utopia, you can't slap this on top of the uh, number 39 Utopia Beyond. But it's still fine. Uh, Utopia Beyond, you still run it because just overlaying the... Um, I, I've gone into this actually several times just because you um, overlay your two heralds and it gets over big stuff. Uh, like There's a lot of times where like, you'll have like three heralds on board, just depends on your hand. Um, you know, it, it's, it's happened to me several times and someone will get over one of them or whatever. Like They'll bait out all your negates and like get over one and then you're just like, fine, because next turn you just overlay for this and like, beat over their monster because <laughs> it zeroes out their monster. And it's really, really good that way. And then uh, the last uh, Xyz monster is uh, Beatrice, and the reason why you play Beatrice um, is because you go uh, you go into it um, off of two heralds, just like the uh, Utopia Beyond, uh, and you um, you use it to send. Um, it's a 28 booty, of course, but you use it to send a toy vendor and then fix your hands with toy vendor that way as well. Uh, so the Beatrice also goes to contribute to um, just the whole deck and the whole idea of the deck, which is really really great. So um, that is um, all the Xyz monsters. Uh, moving on to the rest of the uh, extra deck. Um, so what you send off of uh, Gale Dagra normally is your uh, Herald of Arc Lights, of course. So what I was explaining earlier, you know, you get your plus uh, plus one off of it. You get your two searches off of it. But uh, Sam reminded me that this is a card. Um, Elder Entity, mts. we just call it mts, like mts, mts, mts. <laughs> we don't know, what, like how do you pronounce that, you know? Um, like this card right here, why this is so good, okay? It's because um, you send this off of Gale Dagra and you use it to pop your own vendor and it completes your hands that way. So um, you, that's, it's really, really good. So between uh, Beatrice, uh, you use Beatrice to send vendor, um, you know, or, um, you know, Foolish Goods. Actually, that's what I cut, um, you know, I, I cut a Foolish Goods, that's what I cut for the third preparation of rights is foolish goods and why foolish goods is uh, not as good as uh, desires and stuff desires fixes your hands a uh, foolish goods is only there um, to try to get that vendor in the grave, but between um, Beatrice and uh, Nts, now that this is available to us, uh, now that we remember that this is available to us, you don't actually need to run Foolish Goods in the deck. Um, so this is just, oh man, it's really, really good. I'm gonna talk about this card more in the side deck, actually, because there's something really interesting uh, with this card in the side deck, but um, uh, you play the Seraphonite, of course, you know, two normal summons, your brilliant fusion target. Um, Mrs. Radiant, which you make just about every single duel, it's like you know, this is your main link monster, but there are some really weird hands and stuff in situations where you'll even summon like a wings from your graveyard off of the field spell by like shuffling one spell back to be able to summon a decode talker. It's weird situations do arise, guys, uh, sometimes with the stack, especially uh, going seconds, and um, the decode talker helps fix that. Deltros helps fix it. This card actually helps fix it too because you can technically uh, normal summon Dagra and pop that way, and then Dagra helps you go seconds <laughs> like that way. So that's really, really good as well. And it's something I actually just remembered. But yeah, there's the, the, the point is guys everything in this deck just works so well together it's it's just i think it's perfect i really really do but let's get into the side deck now so obviously herald is a go first deck i mean if i haven't explained that and you know well enough through this video if that's just not obvious from it being a herald deck i'm sorry uh, but you kind of want to go first and win the die roll with this deck every single time but uh, your side deck is just 100 aimed at going second okay so uh that's your strategy win the die roll go first and then if you go second uh side in these cards so uh um, what you do is you side in three Hanawata because Hanawata is really good against Trick Stars. Uh, you also try to side things that are searchable in the deck because, uh, like I said, you know, throughout the video, uh, Benton searches out any lead light fairy and uh, you side a lot of light fairies that you can search, which is really great. Uh, Hanawata, really good against Trick Stars. Um, Lancia, Lancia is good against Invoked, good against anything, good against evenly matched, good against just, uh, it's just so good. Such a good card. Like, Lancia is just fantastic. Uh, it helps with reincarnation, helps with uh, just everything. Thing, okay, and then um, Dinko Seca. Okay, um, so um, 
Dinko Seka use you use against Paleo and stuff, and it's um, it's not a berry. Um, it is a light. It doesn't really help you that it's a light. It's just it just happens to be a light that you can technically send off a brilliant fusion if you wanted to. Uh, but um, why um, why you side this card is not just because of Paleo, but because of Counter Fairies and just every single back row deck that people are going to be playing right now and stuff. Like you side this thing, and you have two normal summons off a of brilliant fusion anyway, so you can normal summon this thing, brick out your opponent, and still be able to normal summon like a stick or a dog or something like that. After after, you know if you open up this and brilliant fusion so it's perfect um, I don't have evenly matched uh, speaking of uh, evenly matched earlier and stuff um, I don't have e evenly matched I just side I just side kaijus um, and uh, I feel like uh, the reason so the, I don't side I don't side slumber uh, the reason why I'm playing Kamungus um, is just technically because um, I've drawn two of this before and I wished that it was a bigger kaiju when I drew two kaijus if that makes sense so uh, what I did is I just swapped the third gamma seal for a Kamungus um, just because if you open two of it you want to be able to like beat over it but like you still don't you don't want this kaiju to be too big though because this deck doesn't do the best at getting over big monsters so um you want it to be small enough to where just basically a lot of things in your deck can get over it i mean uh, illuminite can crash into it for example because it's 2400 just uh you know you, you get my point you just want to have like a nether kind of kaiju um then too honest uh, because you can you know search this in the deck it's a light fairy this gets over this helps you get over anything it helps you like going second and stuff um especially if you can't like make like uh, utopia the lightning and stuff like that this helps you like essentially turn any card in your deck into a lightning because <laughs> like just about every card in your deck is light uh, so that's really good and then the last card in the side deck is monster aboard uh, for exactly the reason I was stating earlier just being able to um, go second and uh, get out a level four from your opponent's um, graveyard and um, you know overlay with it and go into Castell and be able to push through their board with Castell and stuff like that for example is just really 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 great and not only that you can technically summon anything and just beat them to death with their own monsters it's just it's just really 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 good and technically you can put this in uh, we were trying to fit the, we were trying too hard to fit it in the main and honestly this card is just doesn't really fit with the overall strategy the only way this card fits with the overall strategy of the deck in the main is if you're using it to summon back the stick so you can get another chair for another herald negate but outside of that it's not useful and you already have the field spell for that and the three terraformings for that and literally a million draw cards in the deck for that anyway so a monster reborn is just really really redundant and it's just way better in the side in this specific deck anyways all right so we have a toy vendor very very interesting so uh from here we have like okay this is exactly the kind of hand i wanted to show you guys so first up what you're going to do is activate a ritual sanctuary um activate ritual sanctuary's effect of pitching toy vendor um then what you're going to do is um the ritual sanctuary is going to kick in giving you a search you always want to search that benton first um that because you only run two benton so uh search the benton and then uh toy vendor is going to resolve give, giving you a search for wings so we're going to search out that fluffle wings and then what you're going to do is activate a fluffle bear a uh, fluffle bear is going to uh, set a toy vendor from your deck so it sets toy vendor and then what you're going to do is go ahead and activate toy vendor um and then uh what you're going to do off the toy vendor let's go ahead and shuffle and then like you know do a cut there uh, what you're going to do off of the um toy vendor is um activate it to pitch wings and it gives you uh, usually um, you when why you, why you don't care is because usually uh, you will get a spell for the ritual spell yeah so like I mean not the ritual spell but the uh, field spell um, you know you'll mill um, a, a spell out like this like that <laughs> like I knew like because most of the deck spells so uh, now what you do is um, you, uh, you banish you activate wings banishing wings and bear um, and then that's going to let you draw and that's gonna pop see got the brilliant fusion and then draw again. And then uh, Vendor is going to resolve giving you that bear. So as you can see, it fixed the bad hand that we had. <laughs> like it's really, really good. So um, we're gonna activate the uh, Brilliant Fusion now. Uh, verse seven keep in mind we haven't even burned the normal summon yet okay <laughs> this is really good so activate brilliant fusion uh send garnet and then you're gonna send a stick because you always send stick uh because um well you always you always send wings but if you draw into the wings um you know or use the wings like we just did you always send stick because you can shuffle back um you know you shuffle back uh, spells out of the graveyard off of the ritual that the ritual sanctuary to um go ahead and summon stick out to get you another chair if that makes sense um so um it gives you an extra negate for herald is what i'm getting at here so um what was i doing oh yeah yeah, so uh, summon a uh, Seraphonite. So there's the Seraphonite. And then what, we, what you're going to do is you're going to use your normal summon to get out Gale Dagra. Um, activate Gale Dagra. Um, Gale Dagra is going to send um, Herald twice. So let's just go ahead and get two searches. And uh, you're going to search out your um, Dawn. And you're going to get, uh, let's see, Dawn and uh, Herald. 
And then what you're gonna do, um, what you can do technically, um, is if you wanted to be cheeky here, <laughs> if you really wanted to be cheeky, uh, what you would do is um, you would you would activate uh, Brilliant Fusion, um, and you would uh, boost his attack all the way to like normal stats, and then you would activate Prep, and then get this back, and then search it again. <laughs> but uh, that's a way if you wanted to be like really cheeky. Uh, and so from here, um, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna go ahead and search out. Um, uh, let's go ahead and get out the other Benton, because like I don't like the other Benton in deck, and I like to have um, my pre preps live for you know when I draw them and stuff. So I like to keep heralds and dons in the deck. So if I draw a pre prep, it's live. And uh, also, you know, Benton doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, you don't want to draw into Benton, so I like to have it out of the deck, like I was explaining earlier. So uh, from here, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, you know do this little number that'll come back uh, that's, this will also give us a search so um let's go ahead and so that'll be a chain like two a chain like one uh two will resolve bouncing this back to hand one will resolve uh, will, will resolve sorry i can't i can't speak right now giving us a search for a chair so uh what we're gonna do from here is go ahead and uh, it doesn't really matter um we could go oh, yeah this is out by the way so this is out <laughs> out by the way um and then we're gonna go ahead and uh it doesn't really matter let's go ahead and go into that mrs radiance and then we're gonna go ahead and normal summon that stick and then a chain chair and uh, i don't know if i shuffled a second ago let's shuffle again just to be safe and um resolve stick and chair so cut in half uh chair will resolve uh, so draw one and then uh this will resolve searching out another chair so do, do, do. so chair and then shuffle that up cut again um summon and then draw again busted and then technically if you wanted to you could summon this chair and get another draw but since it's a fairy and we want as many fairies as possible um in the in our in our hand for herald let's go ahead and leave it in our hand that's what that's what you would do right here um and then what you do um is you overlay all of these um into this link zone and um you overlay into ouroboros so here's ouroboros ouroboros uh, will activate with stick right on summon popping your own brilliant fusion and that'll draw nice and that'll give us another search which is busted wow okay i wish this searched out i wish this searched out um uh, ritual spells too because then we would have two heralds on board too bad we didn't get a dawn but this is still like a really really good example hand um activate um ouroboros and then um, that'll rob a card from your opponent's hand. Uh, normally what we would do right here is try to you know shuffle back these spells after you activate this one to uh, summon back uh, the, ch the chair, I mean not the ch chair, you summon back the stick to search the last chair, but we drew the, you know, the third chair, so you, won you don't wanna do that now. Uh, but you, what you do wanna do is activate that prep of rights to get just one extra negate. So um, in other words, guys, um, right now we have a herald on board, we robbed a card out of our opponent's hand. So our opponent's gonna start with five cards. We have six negates in hand. We have six negates in hand. They're gonna start with five cards. We have more negates in hand than they have cards. You won the duel. So that is the entire deck profile, guys, except for, I mean, there's there's a lot of, you know, different subtleties and things that I can explain, but they but they won't come up in, unless I'm playing, you know what I mean, to where I can explain in the moment, you know, when the uh, situation comes up. Um, so since I can't, you know, replicate every single situation with this deck to show you guys how to play, you know, play out hands in those situations, um, I'm just going to kind of uh, leave you with uh, with uh, what I kind of already explained. Uh, the one, and I'm also going to explain this right now because I completely forgot when I got to the side deck earlier. Um, what I was going to explain about the side deck that's really really clever uh, when you sign in uh Hanawata, um and, and since you're already playing a fluffle bear uh, you can technically go into herald of arc light like synchro summon for it because uh Hanawata is a tuner and what i was talking about earlier is that uh, technically i mean this 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 is very very rare that this is gonna happen right well what's even rarer is if you have a synchro monster out and an xyz monster out you can technically make this in the deck too <laughs> so um that that's that's uh, what i was gonna explain earlier something really you know uh, really funny and the, you know kind of cute in the deck um, and the, the situation hasn't came up uh, came up for me at all like i'm not even gonna like lie and try to be cool right now like the situation i haven't even made the herald like i haven't even gotten this far uh getting this far is like impossible so um, i'm just pointing out that technically you can do it it is possible in the deck and uh, that's that's really cool and that's uh, that's another um you know uh, uh, that's another example of uh, just how the deck really works together very very well and uh, just how perfect the deck is and how fun it is it's just it's just an amazing deck guys and i really hope that you enjoyed this deck profile i really hope that um you guys uh, pick up the deck and uh you know give it a chance because uh this will win you if you're if you're really lucky with die rolls i promise if you if you uh, win die rolls every single time and you start playing this deck card for card um you will win probably every single duel that you ever play unless you draw like garnet and, and uh brilliant fusions every single hand <laughs> i mean outside of that uh, if you don't draw the garnet if you don't or if you just don't open bad i mean if you just pile shuffle every single game you'll, you'll probably 
probably win if you if you win that die roll. The deck is just really, 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 really good. I don't know what else I could really say about the deck. I mean, it's just, it kind of speaks for itself. I mean, you can, you go first, you side for going second, and you usually just kind of win. Um, you know, with this hand, you would you would activate a brilliant fusion, send a wings, do a the bear wings combo, and try to dig for a herald to fix your dead hand. That's how you play out this one, by the way. I'm just kind of messing around at this point and dragging the video out. So I'm gonna stop dragging the video out, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this deck profile. Um, go ahead, pick up the deck, start playing it and stuff. It's a lot of fun. And until next time, guys, be sure to dick slap that like button and subscribe. Subscribe! <laughs>